And we're back for our halftime show while the players get ready for game number two between Team Liquid Challenger and Golden Guardian Challenger, a.k.a. Tender Love and Care and Good Guy Club. Rafa, do you agree? Good Guy Club? Are we, are we positive or negative uh, on that name? I, I think it's a, a, this is a solid name. A solid right. name. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it. It's a good we can, one. We can yeah, workshop think, it. We, we yeah, will go through all the teams. We can workshop something. material, for sure, for sure, for sure. Okay. You know, it's a solid start. We can iterate on it throughout. Uh, we'll also need to think of ones for a fly quest. Uh, and AOE that are coming up later. So, uh, Rafa, that's going to be my homework for you. Area of effect. But You're giving me homework? I'm the guest. Uh, <laughs> yes, but uh, you, we're still paying you, so there's an expectation here. <laughs> ah. have to speaking of, speaking of, I hear that you were also working on something during that last game because uh, as guest, it is your responsibility to entertain us and the audience at home during these well, break segments. So here, here, here's the thing, Kangas. Um, uh, I'm actually in a bit of trouble right now, and oh, I was, okay. I, yes. I, I'm, I'm, you all know I love to play music, however, yep. my my songwriting skills, like the lyrics, it's a little bit more difficult, yeah, you know, I, I, I was looking at this, this riff right here, okay, I like it, Solid. But, uh, but I didn't know where to get my inspiration from, you know, okay, I, okay. I didn't know where to go, so I, I, I need your, I need your help. For this, so hey, we're gonna... have you ever considered getting inspiration from the Challengers League players? I feel like they they, oh, they would be great inspiration. For oh. Yeah, that, that that was that was a very dominant match. You know yeah. what? Um, I'm not gonna lie. I was spending so much time trying to think of lyrics, I didn't catch most of the game. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I need to. Uh, we need to find a way to communicate for those okay, that okay. might have missed this match and are just coming in and saying, "Hey, sure. what just happened?" So. You know what? Luckily, I, I, we watched. Me and yeah, Joshi watched. I, I, think we I got, got a notepad covered. here. I got a notepad here. So let me cook. Um, <laughs> let me. Let's. Uh, here. Why don't you first give me the name of the team that just won? Uh, team Liquid Tender Challengers. Tender Loving Care. Tender Loving Care. <laughs> Which one is it? <laughs> Let's go Tender Loving Care. It's Tender Loving Care, baby. They won. Tender Loving Care. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's okay. All right, hit me with another brain buster. Hit me with okay. another brain buster. Um, freeze. Uh, what's an adjective? What's an adjective you can give me? Um, adjective. dominant. Dominant. Okay, okay, okay. Um, uh, right, let's go every other Joshi. I'll I'll take the next. Okay, one. okay. Yeah, yeah, got yeah. It. Uh, can I get? Another adjective. Another adjective. Another adjective. Um, silly. <laughs> oh no. Good this, one. Oh, oh no. <laughs> okay. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think these lyrics are going to be perfect. Honestly. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. you know what? Why don't you give me the player that you felt was the the most valuable player on the the winning team? Mm, who, who made mm. the who who really? Led the charge. Let's for this let's school. go with. There's a couple options, but I'm gonna have to go with Bradley here. Chadley. Brad no, don't take Bradley out. Put in Chadley. Chadley. Okay. Yeah, Chadley, yeah. not badly. Chadley. Today. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't uh, been badly in a long time. He's been okay. mostly Chadley. No, he hasn't. Yeah, but I'm just specifying. So. It's just clarifying, you know. Okay. Give me like a like a a sound effect. You know, like kablamo, bow. <laughs> we, you know, just just something. Something. A chew. <laughs> Is that a sound effect? Yeah, that that works. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, how how long is this? And one more sound. One more sound effect. One more sound effect. Yeah. Uh, splat. That's a classic. That's a classic. Right. classic one. Okay. Um. All right, one box in. One right, box what, in. What, what you got for us, Rafa? Uh, yeah, yeah. We we yeah. got to get the full experience here. Okay. Well, Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, you've played Silver Scrapes in front of like a whole audience. You're fine. That was rehearsed! Well, this is a one take. <laughs> Let me tell you a tale of tender love and care challenger. <laughs> Don't forget the name Honda, it's a dominant sponsor A legacy to live up to, let's see how they will do Golden Guardians, a silly opponent Who will bask in this moment Chadley took the reins and gathered all their might With a single, a two! They said, 
Splat! GG, we're all dead! <laughs> oh. That's Boom. good. Boom! That's good. I, I hope that I can feel it. I can feel it. It, did that make sense? <laughs> I, I don't know if that made sense or not for it was, it the was, match. It was gorgeous. It's exactly what we were looking for this entire time. <laughs> Bold move writing a, an ad lib song without like factoring in how many syllables we <laughs> give you. Uh, but I think given given what you were working with, that was good. Yeah, was Tender good. Loving Care Challengers is I think my new favorite team name. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we added another C at the end there. <laughs> I, you know, I, I really wanted to challenge ourselves because we are in the challengers mm -hmm. league and a lot of our music content for before was pre-written pre-recorded this time yeah. this is a little bit on the fly on the spot you know so yeah look so, next time mark you let me know i'll get some castanets and maracas and we can we can make ooh. it work we'll get the little percussion yeah we could definitely get some background music going for these bits yeah next time you're you're well josh i mean you live literally down the hall from me you could have next time i'll come dancing through in a hula skirt <laughs> <laughs> that 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 works for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that actually would have been perfect. Can we do that one more time? Actually, production. Can we? Can we just run it back? I don't think. I don't have time. a hula skirt. I need to get. Yeah, we don't no, quite have enough time. We're we're not prepared for that far of a, a production here. But you know what? <laughs> I would have definitely loved to do that more on the fly. Yeah. Uh, Rafa, how how do you feel? Uh, I'm sure that your Twitter's blowing up right now from all the Golden Guardians uh, members calling them silly. A silly team. You that was put rude. me on the spot. You you said silly was the adjective, and I was like, uh. uh this Everyone is, said this it. Is, this is where it fits. A little you weird, a little cringe. A, not gonna lie. You put me in a silly position, Kingus. Ah, uh, there we go. There we go. Uh, I, that could have gone way worse, though. Again, bold, bold move. <laughs> Third adjective before the team mm. name. Uh, thankfully, we you know kept is. it. EG. And it's, it's still a good uh, guy club for now, did, so. actually. What? It was. I'm surprised that you, you kept it PG. I thought that we were going to like really push See, it. Like, I definitely you know, would have like, I can do some things for my own voice, but like it is it is Mark that we do need to be a little bit careful really? of. He's the wholesome really? boy on the broadcast. We can't get him canceled. Look, he's, even, he's almost he as red as his shirt day. right now, just having <laughs> had to call them silly. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Rafa. Don't, 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 it, it's just a bit... It's just the bit. <laughs> it's just the bit. Thank you for coming on and entertaining us while the players get ready for the next game. I'm hearing that we are ready for a pick and ban. So let's bid farewell to musician Mark. We'll bring him back later on in the show. But for now, we're hopping into pick and ban for game number two. Live musical performance from Rafa, though. Everyone give him a yeah. round of applause right there. That was great. And I can guarantee I did not hear him practicing it at all. So he literally just made it up on the spot. Like, I guarantee that, that's the kind of thing that you love to see. That's why he's getting paid the big bucks up in but, LCS. But, but now we know for future times, if he ever does that again, just add the most syllables possible for whatever words you give him, because that's <laughs> definitely going to trip him up. Uh, but you're trying to bring our attention into the game itself, which I'm happy about. Let's get into this. True. I mean, we got a whole lot coming through right now between Golden Guardians, the Good Guy Club, and Team Liquid Challengers. And I'm going to be real, that was much more one-sided and dominant of a game than I think we were expecting. I'm going to close that off so I can't actually see what happens in the rest of the draft. Thank you there, producer. We got a little bit of a spoiler <laughs> as to some of the picks that might get locked in here. Yeah, I want to react with you guys. I want to see what's going on. But we got the Fiora. We got a lot of very standard bands. I think Yumi bands. is getting locked in this game. <laughs> I do, and I think it's going to be for Team Liquid, but I don't know where it is, which is going to be the big <laughs> question. And it's one of those champions that I think has been underrepresented thus far. I know we're only on day two, but it is such a strong champion. And the only reason, I think one of the big things when we kind of judge players is it's oftentimes a lot harder to judge a player when they play something like Yumi, right? It's a character where, yes, it's very strong, and there is skill expression, but that skill expression is oftentimes hard to pick up on unless you're very specifically watching them. And when you're trying to showcase how good you are that you deserve an LCS spot, Yumi is not a character that you t are often going to be showing, hey, check out what we're going to be doing. And it's not going to be for a Team Liquid. I saw it wrong. It's going over to Golden Guardians. Well, that's why I called it out because it was the one that was, you know, locked in first. But it's all right. Uh, Joshi was intentionally trying to not watch it. Uh, Team Liquid now get to answer it with themselves. Prismal, of course, with the roll swap. I think Yumi makes sense a lot for a player like him. Although, even though Kim Down, I guess, technically roll swapper as well. True. Uh, but Kim Down's Lux was pretty solid. I actually was Ooh. impressed with Kim Down. Was willing to flash forward, go for bindings, uh, always 
using the uh, you know the E to check brushes to make sure that there's no enemies in sight. So yeah, overall good play. And it looked like a uh, breezy from yesterday, right? Breezy was also yeah. flashing forward quite a bit with Meech on the Lux, and now with the Lucian coming through, you also got the Wu Kong. This is a champion that Mir I was kind of expecting to see a lot of throughout the course of the year, and it was something where he can be a little bit more aggressive, have these opportunities to showcase that he is able to play all kinds of different champions. And now with the Zeri coming through. This is going to be a situation where, like, the Zeri plus Lulu can kind of fight early on in the game, right? You have yeah. the double range champions. The Yumi can fight, but it's a lot harder to be safe with it, right? The entire idea is you use almost all of your Yumi health bar to trade it out, but then the crucial thing is you need to then not die and go back onto the Zeri, because if you have one HP as the Yumi, it kind of doesn't matter because you're never targetable. And you can also try and block things like, you know, I guess you probably don't want to be blocking bubbles and you're not even blocking the bubble uh, <laughs> regard, let's make sure we both get hit this time steve <laughs> first of all your, your your mission is not get hit by a bubble this game i'm, I'm adding True. some homework for you as well on top of rafa's homework that he's got uh but we've seen a lot of the zeri versus illusion matchup so far this weekend but you're right in that the yumi's probably more focused on getting into that late game allowing the zeri to just yeah. position incredibly easy you're already gonna be fast on the zeri now you're even faster and you have you know a shield pocket heal uh, and a slow field on top of it. So I'm uh, yeah. looking to Golden Guardians to probably have a slower bot lane, maybe look to have early plays in their solo lanes if they even want to. Yeah, we also saw it earlier on, right? Uh, Instinct, uh, one of these other younger players has had, you know, did have a pretty decent game on the champion. It's something that absolutely can function if you have frontline and engage tools surrounding you. You've already got the Sichuan, you've got the Yumi already on top of it. So. This is definitely a spot where we're now looking at Golden Guardians challengers to find more frontline, find more engage tools. I would not be surprised if we saw a concept on something more traditional for him, like the Mundo, right? Even with the Heartsteel Mundo, this was a champion that was tearing up the yeah. offseason. Yeah, Mundo actually could fit, just things to make space. Uh, so far, Team Liquid Challengers, they're banning away the, you know, safer blind picks and the Renekton and the Aatrox, although it probably won't be a blind pick if they go for the Gwen for themselves early on here. But regardless, trying to take away a lot of the top laners. Cassante is up. They left the Cassante up, and if they lock in the Gwen, that kind of decentivizes you to even go for the Cassante. True. I mean, also, the Jax does have a pretty decent time into the Cassante as well. I was hoping for the Gwen. It's something that I remember Bradley playing even back when he was a mid laner playing for Bethany Lutheran College back mm. in the day. Now going to be playing the Jax up here in the top side, and ooh. That's not get off the hovers. table, but it is something that Kanza yet. plays a lot. Okay, he used so to play Kanza, this. Uh, 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 the reason that Joshi might be getting baited here is because Kanza plays just a lot of different champions. He's oh, known yeah. for a wide pool. Uh, usually weak side, even if he's playing uh, a lot more carry-focused yeah. champions. But he will play things like Mundo, like Singe, you know, these these off-picks. Yorick, I think he's even played in oh, the yeah. academy level. Uh, but we'll go back to the Cassante. So he, he was like the exciting. only one who played like Mundo last year, too. Yeah. So now the Cassante will have like a skill matchup into the Jax. And with the Akali coming through right now for Young, you have a lot of tools. But the one thing that's a little bit missing is these two characters don't necessarily provide a whole lot more engage. Cassante functions as like a threat in the front line, but doesn't necessarily create space in the traditional way for Z. It is a little bit more difficult to actually pilot. And now, coming out from the Challenger squad, I mean, APA kind of has the run of the mill. I would not be surprised if we saw something like the Cassiopeia coming back oh. just to create a ton of damage. But instead, going with the Galio for that big AoE taunt, you got a lot of melee characters, and it will get a lot of value in these fights. Oh, yeah. And APA, I'm a little sad we don't get to see APA pilot a carry. Because uh, APA, that's like one of the coolest things about him is that he has such a wide carry champ pool, but he's got a wide champ pool in general, and Galio is something that he has played a lot in the past. It can function very well with the, the Wukong. You have just insane engage follow-up. Even if Jax goes in with the Counter-Strike, you know, the Leap Strike and the Counter-Strike, um, that usually buys enough stun time for the Galio to jump in on yeah. top of it. So good follow-up engage, and will make a lot of space for Arrow to work with here because now the Akali, the Cassante jumping in, you're going to get taunted up, you're going to get knocked up, and then Lucian can dash away and uh, position well, which is something that we know Arrow is coming. Yeah, and one of the things that I do like about this guy coming out from APA is it's just his kind of style, right? We said he was a Relian Soul and Talia Tutrick in the past, but he also plays characters like Ziggs and this Galio, things that have a lot of global presence throughout the entire map, and this really plays into his 
historical heavy roaming style, APA is definitely 100% positioned in to have a really good time in this game. Eyes on the rookie mid laner for Team Liquid Challenger. There's been a lot of hype around APA coming into the league. If you've watched Amateur, if you've watched Collegiate, you know <laughs> this is somebody that we will be intently watching the career of. Uh, and th Team Liquid thanking Rafa for the Game 1 theme song. Thank you, Rafa, for yeah. providing that for us. Remember, use the hashtag NACL if you want to get any of your tweets onto the broadcast. Let's make sure we can get as much as we can up there to showcase what's going on. But so far, none of the shenanigans that Alex always tends to like. Not a whole lot of extra vision going down either. And the big thing that I'm going to be hoping for right now is that Rose Thorn does something with the early game, right? In the games where they were going for uh, ganks in the top lane with Doklaw during their time on CLG, Rose Thorn looked like the best jungler in the entire academy scene. But when they don't necessarily find a lot of those early plays, it is a situation where Rose Thorn can kind of struggle to come back into the game, very similar to Shaden in that regard, actually. The word that I used to describe Rose Thorn was active. I didn't see as much activity from Rose Thorn in game number one that I'm used to. Uh, but of course, you know, it's all averages. That might have been an outlier game for him. This time around, I really hope that Rose Thorn lives up to that name a little bit more, or rather that title a little bit more. Rismal trading aggressively onto Kim Down and Arrow. Like you said, his health bar doesn't really matter as much as the Yumi. You'll just be attached to your AD carry, so sometimes it's all right to take these really aggressive trades. Yeah, and the Code Exhaust comes out. Really aggressive. I think Kim Down's fine. Yeah, that I might say that's too aggressive. He's still not attached. Rismal is still just auto-attacking Arrow that entire time. And uh, hey, I mean, they actually won out the trade, kind of. I mean, it's still pretty even, right? You still have a lot of tools on both sides, but that will win them the level two. They will get level two first, and that could allow them to have much more strength in this lane. So very aggressive stuff coming out from Prismal, but uh, I'm actually really impressed that they have the wherewithal to actually make some of these aggressive moves in this lane as a roll swap support. They traded three summoner spells for one, though. That is important to note. Maybe if Rose Thorn comes around here, they can try and get something more, but like flashes and cleanse are up, so unlikely that a dive would work. And Mir's gonna see Rose Thorn. Mm. I don't think Rose Thorn wins this Ooh, fight. Oh, really good Arctic Assault action. Good cancel. Canceling out the damage, and Rose Thorn is absolutely winning this 1v1. APA flashes in with the taunt knockup! First blood! To APA! And Arrow and Pri Ray and Prisma forced away by Arrow and Kim down. It's such a tough spot. All of a sudden, APA moving down, commits both summoner spells in order to pick up that kill, and they needed to. If Mir goes down there, that is so devastating for the Team Liquid game plan. And now Bradley even proxying a wave on concept. Every lane seems to be falling behind at the three minute mark here for Golden Guardian Challengers. Concept can catch a lot of this wave, but he's still going to be behind on Bradley, who goes for the back and picks up the coal as the refillable potion and the control ward. Whew. Again, Team Liquid just seemed like their early game is so clean. Yeah, it's really tough to go up against this team, right? Bradley we was not always the best laner, but has become one of the best. APA was a player who has been playing in the uh, semi-pro scene for such a long time that the fact that they are only now coming up into the Challengers League is a bit of a surprise, I think, for yeah. almost all of us with how well they've been playing over the years and showcasing that they can play champions outside of their kind of off-meta style that they would always go for. I definitely felt like APA has been ready for this level for like a year, two years. <laughs> yeah. And it's cool to see these players finally stepping up and getting these opportunities. Uh, and now with that first blood, APA's back into lane with, you know, half of the Rod of Ages at this point. You know, pretty good in the laning phase, picking up the Ages early on. Oh, for sure. Bradley now running into Rose Thorn. He's level three. Bradley actually feels fine. Arctic Assault's still available, but Concept doesn't want to commit to this. And yeah, I mean, Bradley will win up level, or two levels over Rose Thorn. So Rose Thorn, I think, expecting Concept back up. Concept wanted the wave, though. Maybe miscommunication. Either way, Bradley yeah, comes up pretty good there. Amir, now knowing exactly where Rose Thorn is, looking for a potential invade. Does have the smite, looking for the Gromp. And Rose Thorn has smite too. Who's going to get it? When Stark's assault away, Rosie. gets over the wall. 
Yeah, Rosethorn ends up picking it up, but does have to leave his own jungle. That will give over the wolves if Mira wants to stick around, but also looking to see if Rosethorn backs away. This is a potential dive angle. APA oh. is coming up. Yeah, APA even using the Justice Punch for the movement. Trying to get onto Concept as quickly as possible. Bradley has a wave to work with here. Who tanks it first? Maybe APA? Yeah, gets the taunt in. Winds of War, APA taking it up while Mir and Bradley just hammer on Concept. Concept survived for quite a while, but does fall. Very good. And there you go. Hey, <laughs> let's go, Grapes. That's a, that's a, that's a good reference there. That's a good name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Unironically, though, it is true. Like, these guys are expected to be one of the best mid jungle duos, and now Rose aren't trying to cross map. Array, Frismal doing a lot of damage, but again, exhaust out early. There, you're down for Array. They just don't get enough for their summoner spells. They're even down into health bars. Very tough position. They do have a lot of mana to play with, or at least Array does. Prismal does not, but this game seems to be in a very tough position. Yes, Young is farming well, but APA has already found two kills across the rest of the board. Bradley is slowly getting stronger, and of course, this character becomes a monster in the side lane that Cassante will very much struggle to deal with. It feels as though all the sacrifices the Team Liquid have been making are ones where they're just coming out ahead, and Rosarn is still struggling to find their way into the game. Has been more active, like I was hoping Rosethorn would be, but that activity has not netted an advantage for Golden Guardians Challenger. They are still down a thousand gold, but they have the scaling. We, we were talking about it. It's not all about the early game for them. The, the Array plus Prismal on the Zeri Yumi combo is still terrifying if you can get to that late game state. So I don't necessarily think that like I'm discrediting Golden Guardians current game state too much. I do think that they have uh, definite avenues back into the game. Oh, for sure. Now Mir is forcing Rosethorn away. Another smite fight. This time it goes over to Mir. Rosethorn is going to have to back up. And I'm kind of curious where the advantage will come from uh, for Golden Guardians in the mid game, right? Because if you you can give up the early game sometimes if you have a strong enough mid game to make up for it. But they're not really a team that kind of does. As Bradley just continues to trade up against Concept, potential all win not going to happen. But you need to be able to fight for at least some of the dragons that are going to be spawning. Otherwise, you just get uh, yourself in a position where you have to fight for dragons that you don't want to. Well, Team Liquid has not been quick to go for the dragons despite their early gold lead. We're approaching eight minutes into the game. And that Mount Drake is still up. I think that's good for Golden Guardians because the longer the timer can go, the more comfortable they'll probably feel. The more items they can get on Zeri, the more willing they will be to contest some of these objectives. So if Team Liquid are not trying to force that timer quick, personally, I wouldn't be stressing Golden Guardians. Not quite yet. It is right right on the border where it is starting to become a problem. And again, the player that we're kind of looking at mostly this game is going to be Array. And to their credit, they have bought the bottom lane mostly to a draw with the help of Rose Thorn's attention, even if not outright ganks. But now as we turn towards the top side, uh, Array is choosing to be here. It's going to be a full-on fight right now. Arrow's actually slower to the rotation. Array gets here quickly. 5v4. It might be a steal from Mir. They have ultimates. They have the combos. If Mir goes in, APA can follow up. But it's Rosethorn that goes in first. Concept following oh, up. APA big. buying the space. Concept taking a lot of damage right now. Throws out the all-in. First to fall as Mir gets on the back line. The Cyclone decimating. Oh. The health bars and also getting those knockups. Team Liquid are chasing the remaining members of Golden Guardians under their top turret. They are proxying the wave. Bradley can jump in and try and push this in, but Flash from APA, he says, we go now. That is a four for zero team fight win for Team Liquid Challengers. A four for zero, and they walk away with the Rift Herald. They're going to do so much damage to the structure as well. Prismal, the only one still alive after that. And now they reset with all their gold. They can get directly to the Mountain Dragon. This is a devastating fight coming up for Team Liquid. Should be enough to carry them through, but we'll see. There's still opportunities. It is on Array now. Everything is on this guy to find as much farm as they can. You need to give him every single wave so that he can carry you later. But the name of the game for Team Liquid is APA on the Galio 3-0-3. Yep, yep. What a performance, again, from the rookie in the opening weekend. Has only dropped one game. The Rise, yeah, it wasn't the best <laughs> <laughs> performance. The Cassiopeia, though. Cassiopeia and now, two good. games in a row here, really impressing so far. 
and in a prime position as we take another look yeah. at this replay. Again, it's the trigger pull that always impresses us about younger players. I mean, APA separates the fight into two different halves, and by catching a ray on the very edge of that, denies so much of the DPS coming out from this area for so long that there's not enough to actually kill off Bradley or Amir. But the real thing that comes through it, the real impressive part, is not the ultimate, but the flash afterwards. As we get back to live, Arrow's got a nice flank here. APA again goes in. Golden Guardian start up the dragon. Try and take the fight. Looks like they're getting punished for it. Array onto Arrow. As the help of Young, but just no damage. The oh, bubble the lands, bubble. and Array is down. Double kill to Arrow. Good stuff. I mean, they finally get one back. They are able to pick up Mir, but it is 9 to 1. 5,000 gold already. Only 11 minutes. APA 4 0 4. Score not found. And they can still go back. They haven't even picked up the first dragon, but they are so far ahead in gold that they are still just trying to do damage to these structures so that there's no real way for Golden Guardians to retreat later. The amount of control that Team Liquid have had all day. This best of two series is just disgusting. Concept's about to go down to Bradley in the 1v1. There we go. Flash to guarantee the kill. One final turret shot. Gets him close, but not enough to take him out. And that was, what, yeah. four turret shots? That's how hard Bradley just won that yeah. 1v1. It was close, but just like Graves, no cigar, man. They're still not able to do it. And look at the plates that are going to be going over, right? APA picks up two with the Demolish proc. Another effective kill up over 1,000 gold there in the mid lane. Bradley, too, up 1,500 in the top lane. These solo laners are beasting on the Good Guy Club right now. And again, I mean, one of the cool things that we saw at the beginning of the day was APA's parents coming out to support. And they got the APA jerseys going. They got the mm -hmm. name on the back. The Stearns family have been a big reason why APA has been so strong in this game. You love the wholesome family narrative. Now APA, family can't save him from this one, but his yeah, they can certainly can. Rose Thor and a picked off. Mir jumping on to Young next as the damage with a second Cyclone. Double kill to Mir. Great stuff. I mean, you said family can't save him, but I guess Mir and Kim down might be the new family. They dropped the Rift held in the mid lane. They're going to be taking this mid lane turret at the same time. Arrow down in the bottom lane. Completely uninterrupted time to pick up some plates. You can't ask for a better early game coming out from Team Liquid. Thicky Buddha on Twitter saying, uh, you can all agree always playing ahead is the best mid in the league, right? I mean... Definitely in the conversation. Mm, for sure. Okay. Yeah, it's too early to say. It is definitely too early to say. So all agree, no. But if that's your opinion, I'm not going to judge you for <laughs> it. Because uh, definitely making a point. APA, even with this low of health bar, still buying space for the team to set up around this dragon. But it might be ambitious. The Golden Guardians have a lot of members around. 13 minutes in, and the dragon has not been taken yet. This is the first dragon of the game, and finally Golden Guardians are the ones to commit. Yeah, I mean, they will pick up something. Uh, it's not even 14 minutes, King, is they don't even get the objective bounties off of this. That That's brutal, right? That should be worth an extra, like, 100, 200 gold off of that, but instead it's just going to be, you know, a mountain dragon. They are slowly going to ask, you know, you know, can we, can we do this? But realistically, the answer is going to be no. The only player that was really going to be their saving grace was going to be a Ray, and I love this too from Bradley. I keep seeing these things from top laners. I was like, yes, this is how you play. He's not hitting the minions. He wants the wave to go towards his side of the map so that Concept can't farm, right? That is how you win top lane in your own games. That is how you take a couple of kills into absolutely dominating the game. APA trying to 1v1 Young right now. <laughs> that was the trade. That was that was Young's combo. Yeah. He got through the Galio shield, everybody. Woo! Woo! Aftershock plus the magic damage shield. Yeah, there's not a lot that Young can do at this point. But I, I'm just so impressed with the way that all of these players are not just like beating their opponents, but they are attempting to remove them from the game. And now Arrow does need to be a little bit careful. Has Flash. Nice okay, bubble. Okay, nice bubble from Kim down. Keeping Arrow out of harm's way. Could have been a rough position, or at least Flash out of Arrow, as he was close enough to the wall to get that, so. Yeah. Kim down again, still just impressing me more and more. The more that I see him. I, 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 if I'm being fully honest, was in the camp of people that were like... Didn't have the best tryouts, didn't necessarily turn my head more than other uh, support options for Team Liquid, but Coach Spawn, I interviewed him after their tryouts, and he said, no, Kim Downs is the guy. We saw a lot of promise in 
you know, communication in how he approached the game, how he viewed the game, and uh, uh, now already living up to kind of yeah. the high bar set by this organization. Yeah, I mean, Kim Down is very young. He's definitely a player where you start looking at him as like, is he immediately going to be the best support in the league? No. Can he be the best support in the league by the end of spring? Honestly, maybe. With the way that this guy learns and thinks about the game, having talked to him in the past, like, he's definitely somebody very process-oriented, just like players like Surrey that we give so much credit to. I would not be surprised if under uh, this team, where he's free to limit task as much as he is, he's going to improve very, very fast. I mean, you're landing with somebody like Arrow. Just a wealth of knowledge and experience to pull from. Uh, and then also you have Bradley returning, just stopping top lanes. Mir coming in from a world's performance in the jungle now. And then APA, like one of the most hyped up mid laners coming in from the amateur collegiate scene. Team Liquid, Challenger are set up for success. <laughs> this split. Oh, for sure. There was some question of like, are they going to be as dominant as they were in past splits? Probably not. But, I mean, this oh, that's is... A, that's a hard bar to pass, It's a hard right? bar to, to, to reach, right? But already, the, it almost feels like they're not skipping a beat here. For sure. I, I would love to be able to hear some of their comms, right? Because Bradley's one of those players that, you know, he's a little soft-spoken a lot of the time, but he is so smart and such a good guy as Mira is forced to flash away. Exhausted, locked down. This might be a kill for Golden Guardians, but they just can't get him! With the Nami behind, even APA's magic shield coming in. Young one v three. Looking for something. APA is one v three on the side right there. He said, "Rose Thor Ray, you cannot enter our side of the rift." And Young gets punished for it. Team Liquid Challenger just can do no wrong right now. A uh, four v five is one. Bradley's on the far side of the board and. I, I think this one is done and dusted at this point, Steve. It, we were saying yep. that maybe Array can do something, but at this point, it's just a matter of time before Team Liquid Challengers actually close down this game. They pick up the top lane inner, they pick up the bottom lane inner. That's another effect of four kills going over towards the side of Team Liquid. And again, it's not as though there's only one player who's doing well. Every single player is looking like a strong part of the team, but you know, last time I said I was really impressed with Bradley's performance more than anything. This time, there's no doubt in our mind, it's all about Ian APA Stearns. And what's so cool about this is how many different looks we've seen from the players in just two games. Bradley's played Fiora, Gangplank, Jax, Mirrors played Kindred, Vi, Wukong, APA's played Cassiopeia, Rise, Galio, like very different styles, very different champions. Even Arrow and Kim Dad playing like uh, mostly aggressive bot lanes so far, but not always the same champions. They're showing good champ pools and strong understanding of said champions, which is also just a cool thing from the developmental standpoint. This is semi-pro, after all. This is not the LCS. This is where players can experiment, push the envelope a little bit further, and really experiment with their champ picks. Yeah. I mean, that's something that we... I expect to see a little bit more, especially from... Um top ends of the uh, the top of the table and the bottom of the table just kind of experimenting with picks trying to find opportunities to practice different things and showcase a variety of different ways to play the game and I, again i think team liquid was one of those teams that everybody was kind of expecting to be quite strong but there's no way yeah this is a big oh an array was tanking turrets that feels pretty rough. Bradley gets a double kill now in a 1v3 scenario, and I think he'll win this, this too. This Takes might be a down a third right onto Young, even with Prismal on top of him. I think Bradley's got it. That's another one. He's got Prismal too. Penta kill to Bradley. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. There is no way you can go for this dive. A pentakill, a 2v5 pentakill under the turret. This is going to be the second time in two splits that Team Liquid are going to beat their opponents in under 20 minutes. Just disgusting. Even teleports in to be in the victory screen at the end of the game. The family a photo. A kill in a 2v5. That was domination from I mean, that's Team what the good guy club is for, right? There's like, yeah, you know, this, this one's over. Let's go ahead and give him a pentakill to play with a little bit. A cool highlight reel to show everybody about. I mean, 
again, while Bradley got the highlight at the end, AP a huge player throughout the course of today. I would love to see how else they are going to be playing for the rest of the league as a very exciting rookie. They have Kim down as well, another exciting rookie. Bradley is going to be beasting up everybody in the top lane. And of course, such a veteran roster. I'm expecting this Team Liquid Challengers team to only improve from here. Yeah, making a strong argument for being uh, towards the top of the standings. I know that they did, they're did they not undefeated so far. They did drop a game yesterday. But if they're able to bring this level of performance consistently going forward, they will be up there with the heavy hitters. Uh, you know, the, the likes of Cloud9, Challenger, etc., who are, you know, already coming out the gates swinging. What a crazy performance, though. I mean, <laughs> first the Gangplank, where he almost just, like, wipes everybody a Baron with one barrel combo. Yeah. And then on the Jags, Bradley is really showing how much he's developed as a player, how Im much improved he has been from going as a mid laner a year and a half ago, the top lane, and already having this kind of performance. I mean, the sky's the limit for this guy. Oh, for sure. Uh, this guy started as a mid laner playing for Bethany Luther College, and he was very convinced that I'm not going to name change. People know me as CP Freeze, but... We got to put some respect on the name Bradley at this point because going towards the top lane, he has been so much better. He's improved so quickly. He used to struggle with all the lane matchups, but now he's showcasing how you're supposed to play them at the challenger level. And again, this player is probably going to be in LCS by summer or 2024. The rest of them, there's a strong argument that a lot of them will be in LCS by the beginning of next year as well. I'm excited to see how many of them actually will be promoted by the next year. Team Liquid's already making a you know, reputation as being one of the orgs that's up there with a number of players that have promoted from Academy to LCS. Just looking at last year, three out of the five members of that Academy team that won back-to-back -back Proving Grounds are now in LCS. And it's a little early in the year to say that that trend will continue, but if these performances stack up, there are strong arguments. With that said, we're going to send it to a short break before we're back with an interview with one of the players from Team Liquid. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to the North American Challengers League, where we just watched Team Liquid Honda Challengers take down Golden Guardians Challengers in a dominating 2-0 fashion. But Bradley, we got to start with the uh, big thing. You ended that game with potentially the easiest pentakill I've ever seen in my life. Walk me through what you were thinking as they all started to dive you. Well, we knew that they were gonna try to trade topside, so I was like, I, I need, I need my boy Kim. Like, I was like, Kim, Kim, come up, come up here and help me. Like, they're gonna, they're gonna goon squad me. And he's like, all right. So we pulled up, and then, I mean, kind of the rest is history. They just, they went on my boy Kim, and I was like, okay, no. And then Pentakill, I was like, all right, let's go. And yeah. Then, like, the whole boys, we were all screaming. We were like, oh my god, woo! And it was pretty hype, honestly. It yeah. was uh, definitely one of my most memorable, I would say, ways to end a game. For yeah. me. It was very impressive. Another game less than 20 minutes coming in for the Team Liquid boys. But we got to talk a little mm. bit about the offseason because you are the only returning member of the team that won back-to-back -back Proving Grounds. What is it like with an entirely new team around you? Right, so I think first things first, it's definitely like uh, you have to kind of adjust now. So, um, you know, meshing with a whole new group of people, especially like all four, has definitely been like a new experience for sure. Um, but I think overall, like, I think all four of, like, my new teammates, like, they're all so easy to kind of, like, talk to and, like, hang around, right? So I definitely think, like, meshing with them has been super easy. Um, and then the rest is kind of, like, gameplay, you know? Just, like, ironing out, you know, our strengths as a team, figuring that out, you know, our weaknesses, and then, you know, going forward. But overall, I'd say it's, it's been really good, to be honest. Nice. Who are you especially clicking with? Is there anybody that, like, you've just started going out for dinner? Uh, I don't think we've had kind of, actually, we have had like a team dinner actually, but, um, as a particular, like somebody, no, but I will say, obviously I have been on a team with Arrow before. That's, that's True. the homie, go back to the wild card days, you know, and he was my ADC back then. I was like, what was that? Maybe like two years ago. Yeah. You were still playing mid at the time, right? Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. playing mid at the time. So, you know, obviously I, I have old history with Arrow, you know, I've done content with him in the past. So he's super fun to be around. Used to compete against APA, and now he's a teammate of mine, and we hang out. You know what I mean? And oh, um, yeah. you know, for the rest, as far as like Mir, I, it's funny because like Mir, like he loves burgers. So like the number one thing that we've bonded about is like burgers. It's like oh, like 
Is it is it a Chick Fil A day? Is it a is it a high ho cheeseburger day? Is it a and then like the last one is like main chick like dude it's funny too because like Mir is so, <laughs> Mir is like so skinny but like with the appetite and like what he likes you'd think he'd be like 500 pounds <laughs> but but like he's actually so skinny oh and obviously there's Kim down I like hanging out with him too he's really really nice to be honest yeah. Well, we got to ask then, if you guys are bonding over burgers, what's the joint? Where are you guys going? Ooh, I think overall, it's definitely been Chick-fil-A. But I, Chick recently, I recently introduced him to Hi-Ho Burger, and he was like, okay, oh okay. my gosh. Now, for all of the LA natives, right, a couple of us, you know, Cubby, uh, Roth, and I have recently moved in together here in LA. Right. Where can we find Hi-Ho? Well, we well. use Uber Eats. <laughs> so, I don't know exactly where it is, but if okay, it's on okay. your Uber Eats app, then... All right, all right. Some, sometime soon, sometime during the season, we'll all go to Hi-Ho and film some content together there in person. But I'm so down. We want to get a little bit more into Bradley's thought process for 2023 because a lot of us have you pegged as one of, if not the best top laner in the Challengers League thus far. What expectations do you have for yourself and what goals do you have for yourself throughout this year? Um, as far as expectations go, games like this, I think the series... Let's uh, go! <laughs> I More pentakills! I think the series... Well, regardless of the pentakill, right? I think the series I played today was a very stable game. It was very clean. I was able to be relevant at all points of the game, which is something that every top laner pretty much strives for. And in the games today, I think I did that very well. So, you know, going forward, as long as I'm stable and I'm always going to be a threat to the new team, that's kind of the expectation I have. And then, of course, that could come with a, a few pentakills, if it happens, but yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's awesome. Uh, any goals that you have for the rest of the year? Um, I think, to be honest, a goal of mine is to be the best teammate I can be out of game. I think my coach has outlined it for me very well, that when you look at like very high-level athletes, their whole life pretty much becomes about the thing that they do, right? And like when you think of like the best of the best, you know, they train, they eat, they sleep, they breathe all for the specific thing that they do. So that kind of aspect of League of Legends has kind of caught my attention. And I think my goal is to be a better out of game teammate. That honestly, like having talked with you just a little bit, like you're such a wholesome guy. I'm sure you're going to be one of the best teammates that we have in the league. Is there anything else that you have to say to the fans at home? Any shout outs you'd like to give? Oh, of course. Oh, of it's course. time. It's the boys. Thank you for, a thank you for asking <laughs> me. I would love to shout out Honda. They're the goats. You know <laughs> what I mean? Look, look, look around you. I love Honda. Um, I would like to thank our sponsors as well. You know, with the Alienware Pro Lab, I would like to thank them. You know, um, I would like to thank our fans, obviously, everyone rooting for us into the chat. It means a lot, especially to the new guys, right? Um, you know, having their support, like I I'm already used to having, you know, some support coming off of a lot of great success for the last year. But especially to these new four guys, the support that you guys show them in Twitch chat means a lot. Because I know it meant a lot to me my first year. So I'm speaking from experience here. And then I would like to shout out my family for watching these games. You know, I have a lot of friends that's watching my games, too. Shout out to my girlfriend as well. And I love Honda. There you go. Perfect. TLTF up. Let's go, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out, Bradley. Happy Lunar New Year. Hopefully you get some yeah. fancy, some good Chinese food tonight. But it's been a pleasure. For now, that's going to be all that we have for our second series of the day. We're going to throw it to a short break while we get ready for our last series of FlyQuest Challengers versus AoE Gold. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you in a bit.